My name is Nestle Cicerone, first name N-E-S-L-E-Y, last name C-I-C-E-R-O-N. Good morning, Mr. Cicerone. Good morning. Could you tell us where you are currently residing? At Orange County Jail. And how long have you been there? Nearly three years. Do you remember the date you got arrested? December... 11th of 2012. Okay. Um, do you know Bestman Oakley? Yes. How do you? How, do, how did you know him back in 2012? What was your relationship? School and um, out of knowing him from out of high school and just you know being around the neighborhood. Okay. How, how how many years do you think you had known him at that point? At that point, probably. Over four years, maybe. He was a friend of yours back then? Yes. Did you know a person by the name of Emmanuel Wallace? Yes, I knew of him. And how did you know him? Through Okafer. Was he a friend of Mr. Oakley? Correct. Was he also a friend of yours, Mr. Cicero? An acquaintance rather than a friend. So he's Mr. Okafer's friend, not so much your friend? Correct. And uh, was there another person uh, that you knew of by the name of John L. Gotti? Yes. Yes. More of an associate who played basketball. Okay. Did he also know Mr. Oakley? Correct. And what about uh, Sharia Gordon? Is that somebody you knew? Yes. And how did you know her? Um, she has children with, with Oakver. Let me take you back to September of 2012. Were you in school at that time, or what, what, were, what were you doing? Yes. What, what school were you? Valencia. Computer engineering. Where were you living at that time? 5806 Judy D. Drive. Um, let me take you back. Uh, were, were, you, were you aware back in September that Mr. Oberker had been arrested previously for a home invasion robbery? Yes. Yes. Are you aware that he had an electronic monitor? Correct. Are you aware that the trial of that case was postponed for some time? No, I really didn't know when his... I knew his, he had a trial that year, but I didn't know the exact timing. Okay, you knew it was coming up. Correct. Did Mr. Okafer ever express to you any uh, concerns about how, how things were going with that case? Yes. What did he say? Things of... Uh, uh, that he um, he that th they offered him some a plea deal he didn't want to take it and he's going to take it to court and and that the um, the witness was going to testify against him. Um, did he say anything about his lawyer or anything? About not being happy with. You know, he was unhappy with the the his current lawyer, so I told him he he needs to get a, a private attorney. Yeah. A public defender. Correct. Right. So he was not happy with his public defender. Correct. And you suggested to him get a private attorney. Okay, and that would cost some money. Right? Correct. Right. Um, let me take you back now to the night this happened, and you, you know what we're talking about, right? Correct. Um. That night, September 9th, going into September 10th, where were you sleeping that night? Home. At home, at, at Judy D. Drive. Correct. And did you know where Mr. Okafer lived at that point? He was residing with his older sister, Takethia. And about how far away from your house is that? Driving distance, approximately five minutes. All right, so it's pretty close. Yes. Um... So you're asleep now in your house in Judy G. Drive, right? Correct. Was anybody else in that house with you at that point? Um, my friend Tony Nelson. And was he a roommate of yours, or he was just staying over that night? He was just staying over. We was at earlier that evening. We was at my brother's house watching a football game, so he didn't want to drive all the way back home, so he just stayed there. And you had a bedroom. Correct. And was Tony in a different bedroom. 
Correct. When you went to sleep that night, were you expecting anything to happen the next day? No. All right, so you go to sleep, and does something happen to wake you up? Yes. What happens to wake you up? Okafer. What happened? He knocks on my door, and then he asked me that he needed, he implied that he needed help. He says what? He implied that he needed assistance. He told you he needed help? Correct. Well, I don't remember the exact wording, but but he applied that he needed assistance. Okay. Yes. He wanted me to go with him and just look out. Uh, so did you do that? Yes. And uh, did Mr. Okafer hand you anything at that time? Tony Nelson's car keys. Do you know where they had been? No. I assume they were on Tony Nelson, but I don't know where his keys were, but he handed me the keys. All right, so somehow he had Tony Nelson's keys. Correct. I think they might have been in the family or something. Yeah, maybe. All right, in any event, he gives you Tony Nelson's keys. Did you have a car yourself at that point? No, at that point, I had prior to that, I sold my car. All right, so when Tony Nelson was at your house, he had a car. Correct. And do you remember what kind of car that was? A white Ford Taurus. Parked out in front of your house. Yes. Right. So, so Mr. Okafor hands you the keys, tells you to come with him. Yes. Did you do that? Yes. Um. So what happened? You walked outside the house with Mr. Okafor. Correct. What did you do then? I get in um, Tony Nelson's car, and he gets in his sister's car. Your sister. Takethia's car. car. Yeah. Anything about that car? It's um a white Chevy Malibu. I think it was a. A 2012 Malibu. Do you remember any any particular damage or anything to that car? Just the the door handle on the driver's side. Something wrong with the door handle? You were pushing the door. Mm -hmm. Um. In that car, the the Malibu was what color? White. So you you get into Tony Nelson's car, which you say is a white Ford Taurus. Correct. And what do you do? We head down. Um. Let me ask you first. Did you know where you were going? No. Okay. So how do you? How do you oh, he just up? says follow him. Okay. So we head down. Um, that power? No, not powers. Oh, you start driving. Yeah, Hastings. Uh, yeah, we start driving. Head down Hastings. Now we're on um, Silver Star Road, and headed down away from downtown towards Akoli on Silver Star Road, and. The gas gauge goes, start, comes on, indicating it needs gas. You're in Tony Nelson. Correct. So I speed up, and now we're parallel to one another. He rolls down the window, and I tell him the car needs gas. And then once he wore out the window, that's when I see um, Sharia in the in the passenger side. Okay. Up until then, he didn't know what Sharia was doing. No. Okay. Prior to that, no. And then we went to the Kangaroo gas station near the old ninth grade center. Near the, what, the Evans one is? Yes. Okay. And that's, is that a Marathon gas station you mean? Yes. Okay. Um, so do both cars pull into that gas station? Correct. And that's up on Silver Star, right? Yes. Um, what happens when you get to the gas station? I stay in my car and then Sharia gets out. She goes pays for the gas, put gas in the car. Um, then after that, we leave. All right, so you put gas in the car. Correct. And your Ford Taurus. Your Ford Taurus. Is open for pulling some gas too? Yes. Okay. So you both get some gas. And then what happens? He pulls out. I follow. We get back on Silver Star and make a left on Good Home Road. From Good Home Road, we go through the little neighborhood and meet up on it. And we're at White Road at this abandoned house. Up until that point, you didn't really know where you were going until you were back. Correct. Um,
Yes. To keep his life in scar. Yes. Yes. The four tours, Tony Nelson's car. Correct. On White Road. Correct. And uh, do, do you know any of the streets out there, Torticoe? You know, you know all right, so it's on White Road. So you go down Good, Good Homes Road. Correct. And do you remember you make a right, you make a left, you just right there? We make a uh, off of Good Homes, coming from the direction we were coming, we made a left onto White Road. Okay. And so that's where the, the band happened. Correct. The grass was high, it, no lights were on, so I just assumed it was an abandoned house. Just looked like an abandoned house. Correct. Okay, so when you pull into the abandoned house, it's both cars. I mean, your car and, and Malcolm's car. And a, a third car is already parked there. Third car? And have you ever seen that car before? Yes. How would you describe that car? It was a um, Chevy Impala, older model Chevy Impala, white. Candace's car. He, um, his second sister, the second oldest. I don't think so. Correct. Yes. Hubcaps, older model, white. Yeah, I think it's missing hubcaps. Yes. Yes. Correct. Correct. Um, Godfrey and Wallace are already standing near the vehicle. And Wallace. Correct. Darnell Godfrey and Emmanuel Wallace. Let me show you police exhibit number twelve right here. That's Godfrey. That's Godfrey. Correct. State exhibit A and for identification. Yes, it's Emmanuel Wallace. So what happens now? The three cars and the and the five people are at the abandoned house. What what happens there? Takivia cars in in the driveway. Um, Candace's car is in the grass, and I'm on the side of the road still, with the car running. Um, Oakford gets out, go talks to Godfrey and Wallace, and Sheree is now in the driver's side. Just give me one moment. Um, they're com they're conversating. I don't know what they're conversating about. And then I didn't have a phone on me, so Oakford grabs Wallace's phone and then hands me Wallace's phone. Okay, so you My cell phone on me. Um, what happened with? Did you have a cell phone at that time? Yes. And where where was it? Home. No, I just got up and left. Can you call your phone number from your cell phone? Three two one two one seven five three one two. Yeah. 
Yes. Yes. Correct. Probably on the charger, on the dresser. No. I just woke up and kind of like disoriented and just got up and left. Okay. So, um, so Mr. Okafor tells you what? He hands me the phone. He hands me the phone. Wallace's phone. No, he asked me the phone. He said if I if I see anything or you know call from this phone to his phone. Correct. Anything suspicious, like a police officer or whatever. Yes. Correct. Correct. Emmanuel Wallace's phone. Yes. He had like a purple cover around it. Yes. Correct. Correct. The slight idea, because prior to, um, we had prior conversations prior to that about him getting a private attorney. Correct. Yes. Correct. Uh, help finance some um my school fees. Correct. Yes. Um, okay, so what what happens then? You now have Emmanuel Wilde's phone. What happens? They get um the three get in the car. They put Ogafer, Wallace, and Godfrey. They pull out. They get in Candace's car. Correct. Well, I mean Ogafer. Correct. 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 Yes. She's in um, Takethia's car. She had been a passenger, now she's the driver. Well, prior to him going in the car, he just said, follow me. So, yes. He get. He pulls out. Okafer pulls out. Then Sharia follows him. Then I follow her. Leaving. We're headed, um, we're on White Road. Now we're headed towards um, going deeper into a coy. I don't know the, the actual direction. Correct. 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 There you go. I get caught up at the light. Um, I get caught behind, and then Okafer calls Wallace's phone, tell me to continue to keep coming. Yes. Correct. Correct. Yes. Sorry, I'm 
objection leading your honor. All right. Well, let, let me just see if we can get it straight. So, so you're one car's following the other down White Road, right? Correct. You're the last one. Correct. And you say at some point you, you lost sight of the other two cars. You got too far in front of you? Correct. And somebody called you? Yes. Okafer calls you? Who calls you? Okafer calls me. And says what? He tells me contingent. He directs me to contingent. To go straight to where he's at. Okay, and do you do that? Correct. Did you see, did you pass any cars on the way to following Okafer? No. Did you see Korea's car at all? At the, when I finally caught up to Okafer, no, I didn't know where she was. Okay, I mean, you did see her at some point? Yes, originally going there, but. So, okay, do you, do you, do you catch up with, uh, with, with Francis's uh, power? Yes. No. Okay. So you catch up with you in power and then what? When I catch up to um, Candace's car, I follow him and then he t we make a left, I don't know the street name, and he tells me to wait right here. We're adjacent to one another, but my car is facing, I guess you would say north, his car is facing south, and then he says just stay right here, and if you hear or see anything, call us, and then he pulls off. So your car to be facing north is going to be the U-turn? Correct. And you're not facing him towards White Road? Correct. If you hear or see anything, just call and let me know. Okay. Correct. Yes. The only thing that I know is that was around me to to my back left, I think it was a park, and to my right was like a a grassy area. Correct. It drives off and then takes off, but I don't know which it drives it goes south. And then we'll make a left, and after that, I don't know. Correct. Yes. 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 Yeah, I think so, but yeah. Correct. I have no idea. I know some time elapsed and then I eventually figured well it's not worth it so I, I leave. Yes, the um he has ankle monitor and he had a uh a, well it was he told me that Every well, like every thirty minutes or something, he had like a leeway time with the ankle monitor, and I figured too much time as I don't know how much time has went by, but I figured that time was nearly up or already up, so I just leave. Correct. It was a thirty-minute leeway where if he left his house. I guess the the ankle monitor thing wouldn't go off. Correct. I leave. Back onto White Road, I make a right. And then as I'm leaving, I see um, Sharia Park in the cut and then I just keep going. Uh, where do you go? I go back to the abandoned house. Correct. Eventually yeah they come back. Both cars come back. 
Correct. Uh, what happens then? Um, Godfrey's driving at this point. Um, Candace's car. He pulls in, and then Sharia pulls in behind him. I'm facing. Yes. Got um Candace's car. Correct. Godfrey. Wallace and um Okafer. Correct. Correct. To keep his car. Correct. And now all three cars are back here. Correct. What happened? Okafer, Wallace, and Godfrey get out the vehicle. Okafer heads to the vehicle I'm in, and Tony's. Okafer heads to the vehicle I'm in, which is the the Ford Taurus. He gets in, and then I see Godfrey and Wallace heads towards Takethia's car. Correct. At this point, we leave the abandoned house as I'm taking him home. He explains to me the real reason he was there. Correct. Correct. When you, uh, and that's going back to. Uh, Headed towards Orlando. To, to Keith, you said. Correct. And he dropped him off at his house. Yes. Do you see, and then do you, what do you do? Do you go back home? After, at what point you mean, do I go back home? I thought. You dropped uh, Mr. Oakshire off at Keith. Correct. Okay. After he explains to me what happened, I hand him. Um, Wallace's phone. I said, "Keep me out of this." And then I pull out as I'm leaving. Sharia pull. Sharia is pulling up. And then, what do you do? then I go home. Um, did you ever um, see the reports or the activities? No. Um, did Did he talk to you at all after that? Maybe a day or two later. And what happened then? Just asked me to ride his neighborhood to see if I see anything, and I said no. Who did you see? My uh, police or whatever. And what did he tell me? Was there police? In his in an in his neighborhood, yes. Did you see that? No. Is that because at that time you knew what had happened? Correct. Cicerone, you were spoken to by the, it took a while for the police to actually talk to you. Correct. Because there was a certain amount of time after this happened that the police didn't know about it. Correct. When you first spoke to him, did you see the car yet? No. Did you ever come home? Correct. Did you get arrested? Yes. I'm guilty to the the charge I have now. My plea agreement. And then this is your signature and your lawyer's signature and my signature, right? Correct. And this is what's pushing you to do 
Correct. Correct. No. Testify truthfully, and after I testify truthfully, um, Judge Kess will determine my um, my punishment. The uh, judge. Um, it's been a while. I think fifteen. Yeah. understanding of what could happen to you if you don't tell the truth um, if I'm not mistaken that plea can be rescinded and I can face up to life um, we talked about uh, Mr. Okafer yes so in between his counselors black um, blazer and what appears to be a beige dress shirt. He's sitting down in the middle with black gentleman, dark and dark. He's in the, he's in the middle. His yes, yes.
to run a little bit into the lunch hour. I'll give you additional time at the end of the lunch hour. I'd like to finish with this witness if we could. Okay, great. Thank you.
Okay. Back on, you told the jury that that morning um, you left the gas station and you went to a place uh, near 503 Bernardino Drive and you sat somewhere by yourself, correct? We left the gas station and then went to the abandoned house. Okay, and you left, after you left the abandoned house, you went somewhere else, correct? At what point? What do you mean sat by myself? Well, it's my understanding you told the state in direct examination that um, allegedly Mr. Oakford told you to go and sit in some park, right? No. So what, what did you do after you left this alleged abandoned, abandoned house? Follow Oakford. Okay, and where did you go? Down White Road. Okay, and where did you end up? I don't know the street name, but when he called the phone, when he called Wallace's phone and told me to catch up to him, we kept going. I don't know the street. We I made a left on, and he told me to park right here, and he tells me to stay there. At that point, I don't know what road I'm on, what street okay. I'm on. Okay, but you parked somewhere and you stayed there, right? Correct. And you were there alone, correct? Yes. Okay, so no one else knows what you're doing that period of time, right? No. No one was with you? No. And you said that uh, you sat there and you decided on your own when you just when you were going to leave that location, correct? Yes, as time elapsed, I just I decided to leave. Okay. And no one know when you left that spot, right? No. In fact, no one can account for anything you did for the period of time that you alleged that you stayed in that one spot, right? Yeah. Right? You said no one can account. For what you were doing during that period of time that you state that you were in that little cleared area by yourself. <laughs> Besides me, no. And I believe you told us that you knew Godfrey and Emmanuel Wallace, right, from playing basketball. Is that true? Yes. Knew of them. Pardon me? I know of them. Like, they're not personal friends. But you've played basketball with them before, right? Yes. And you state that after you dropped Mr. Okafor off, that was the last time you spoke to Mr. Okafor, right? Yes. Physically. And you've entered into a plea agreement in this case, correct? Correct. And you were expecting to say whatever is necessary to have the court honor that agreement? No. But you have an idea of what you're supposed to say in this courtroom, right? The truth.
May I have a moment, Your Honor? You may. Redirect. Just one question. You said you never spoke to Mr. Sam after the, uh, you dropped him off. He said that I see him. I said physically no, but I spoke to him. And that was that phone call about come by and see if there's any food. Correct. Which you didn't make. No. No further questions. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to go ahead and excuse you for lunch at this point. It is 12 o'clock. I'm going to ask you to be back at 1.30. During the lunch hour, I'm going to caution you, once again, do not do any research, do not speak with anybody, do not let anybody speak with you. Uh, if a conversation comes up about are you on this jury, I think we can simply say I'm on a jury and leave it at that. Please remember, there's deputies around, around the courthouse and even outside the courthouse. If somebody approaches you, starts to talk about this case, and you tell them, I'm sorry I can't talk, and they continue to bother you, go immediately to a deputy and let them know that you're on this jury and tell them what's going on in this particular matter. We're, I remember the attorneys, again, they, they're nice folks. They just cannot say anything to you, so please don't hold that against them. We will see you back at 1.30. Leave your pads on your chairs. Seven line twenty three. Six and three and four. Mr. Alton is asking for a copy of that. You can stay for a minute. Okay. All right, Mr. Uh, Altman, I understand that there's a proffer that needs to be done. Let's do that since we're going to be taking this witness downstairs. First of all, to put this in perspective, is dealing with a series of questions. Uh, that Mr. Altman was asking of this witness, and I'm going to ask our court reporter, if she can, to read back that section for us, if you would, Sue. Unless my notes are wrong, I think it's around 107, starting a little before line 22. No, go, I'm sorry, go back a little farther than that, if you would. Why don't we start at, one, at line seven, 107, line 13. No, that's okay. All right, Mr. Uh, Mosley, I know, I think it's Mr. Uh, Anaku, but it may have been you asked for proper, but tell me what it is about that exchange that suggests your ability to put on some testimony in response to that. As long as one of you is, I can't have both of you do it.
You, you've said that twice, once at sidebar, and now. I've read now this statement, over this questions that were asked three times. Show me how that is open, door is open. Well, they asked what happened next. They didn't say That's all they asked. By saying, quote, then what, unquote, that's opening the door? That was the question. Then what? Two words. Mr. Altman, response. testify in this case about what happened in that house. He is certainly free to do so, but he is hardly unavailable. He's sitting right at council table. Um, and this is simply a self-serving hearsay statement. It cannot be offered by the defendant. It can only be offered against the defendant. somebody else was the killer rather than him. And such a statement would not be admissible unless corroborating circumstances show the trustworthiness of the statement. And the rule would certainly in this case there's nothing to corroborate this statement. So this is simply naked hearsay, self-serving statement by the defendant. Nothing was elicited by the, by the state about what Mr. Oakley told him. And it was, it was clearly you may make your proper from what? You briefly can, but.
You may proffer the testimony. Start of the proffer. Sir, did, uh, just for the record, state your name one more time. Nesli Cicero. Did Mr. Okafor ever uh, make, tell you about what happened in the house at the time of the shooting? His account, yes. What did he tell you? His account, yes. What did he tell you? He told me that. He shot at the girl, and then Godfrey shot at the guys, or guys, I don't quite remember how it was, and Wallace didn't do anything. Okay. So Mr. Oakford told you he shot at the girl. Correct. And then did he tell you that she then fell down? Yes. And he told you that he shot at, or that Mr. Godfrey shot at one or both of the boys? Correct. That's all I have, Your Honor. Thank you. Do you have anything on the proper, Mr. Alton? No, sir. Okay. That'll complete the proper. All right. All right, folks. We'll be in recess until after lunch. Thank you. He can go down. Yes. 1.30. Uh, actually, yeah, 1.30, 1.45 if you want. We've used up 15 minutes here. Yeah, 1.45. I was actually able to mark, use this thing to mark it and get back to it. First time I've done it. First time, not I've marked it, first time I've been able to get back to it.